Hi everyone. In this lecture, we're going to talk about Oracle Data Guard Basic Concepts Part 2. In this lecture, we're going to discuss about the following topics. Role transitions, switch over and failover, data guard management tools, Oracle Data Guard broker benefits, and flashback database and data guard. When we say role transitions, we mean changing the roles of the databases. The primary database will become standby or it will go offline and one of the standby databases will take the role of being a primary database. We have two types of role transitions, switch over and failover. Switch over is the role reversal between the primary database and one of its standby databases. One of the standby databases will become the primary database and the primary database will become a standby database. This is a planned action. You usually do it when you want to take the primary database system offline. Uh, for example, if you want to make changes on the uh, server that hosts the primary database or you want to do some testing. So this action is a planned action, something a DBA should do. When, you, when switch over takes place, no data is lost. Failover is performed only in the event of a failure of the primary database. One of the standby databases, if you have more than one standby database, becomes the primary database. And the primary database is supposed to be unavailable. So failover is a process that takes place as, in, as a reaction to an incident, to a failure of the primary database. It is not planned. In case of failover, you will not lose data only if you were using the sync configuration in your data guard. If you are using a synchronous configuration, some data will be lost. Failover can be automated using a feature called fast start failover. We will talk in a separate lecture about fast start failover. This is a simple diagram which explains the switch over operation. Here we have application servers or client connected to the primary database and the primary database is in sync with the standby database. The DBA decides to perform some changes on the primary database so he decides to perform switch over. He will go through the procedure to, to perform switch over, which resulted in changing the standby database to a primary database and the primary database to standby database. And the clients and application servers will be connected to the old standby database or the new primary database. As you can see in the figure, the redo transport services will be reversed. The direction will be from the new primary database to the standby to the new standby database this figure illustrates the failover failover should be performed only when the primary database becomes unavailable if the primary database goes down for any reason the standby database or one of the standby databases will become primary database and the clients and the application servers will be connected to the primary database, to the new primary database. This procedure could be automated if you use fast start failover, or it could be done manually by the DBA. We will cover both the procedures in this course. When you decide to configure a data guard environment, you have three tools for management. Either you use SQL plus utility, Data Guard Broker, or Oracle Enterprise Manager Cloud Control. SQL plus, as you know, is a command line prompt utility. It can be used for managing the Data Guard environment. But in this case, you are using the manual method. You issue some dedicated SQL commands to do the failover, switch over, changing one of the properties of the data guard uh, parameters, and so on. You manage everything manually as a DBA. Data guard broker is also a command line prompt, 
but the commands are only mainly dedicated for managing the data guard. You can use also Oracle Enterprise Manager for managing the data guard environment. And as you may know, Oracle Enterprise Manager has the advantage of providing you a GUI interface for managing the data guard. However, if you want to use Oracle Enterprise Manager for managing the data guard, the data guard broker must be installed. You cannot manage your data guard environment until you configure the data guard broker in your data guard uh, configuration. Another important point to remember is that when you con when you configure the data guard broker in your data guard environment, you cannot manage it using SQL SQL Plus. Here, I'll talk more about the benefits of using Oracle Data Guard Broker. Data Guard Broker makes it easier to set up the Redo Transport and Apply services. We will we will cover this in a lecture and you will see how easy it is to configure the Redo Transport and Apply service compared to configuring them in SQL Plus. Another advantage, the procedure to perform switch over and fair over is much simpler than using SQL Plus. It's basically a single command, a very easy single command uh, which you execute on a data guard broker command line which will do all the magic. Also, if you want to use fast start failover or automatic failover, data guard is a must. You should configure it. You cannot use that feature until you configure data guard broker. If you have rack database, data guard broker will make it easier to manage the data guard environment. Also, when you use data guard broker to to execute your management commands you don't have to be connected to a specific uh, database you can connect to uh, standby database and from there you execute your commands however data guard bro data guard uh, broker command line uh, relies on the primary database to obtain the information about the data guard environment we will discuss this in more details in a separate lecture. So in conclusion, you can see there are so many benefits of using Data Guard Broker. That's why I highly recommend configuring, configuring it for any production environment. I assume you are already aware about the Flashback Database. If you haven't used the Flashback database before, it's simply a technology which is used to recover from logical corruptions and user errors. For example, if you delete a record by mistake, if you make some update on the data by mistake, if you drop a table uh, by mistake and you want to recover from that uh, incident, you can use Flashback database feature. Imagine with me the following scenario. Suppose you have two databases one primary database and one standby database. Suppose a failure happened to the primary database and it becomes unavailable. So the clients will be failed over to the standby database. Suppose later the, prim the primary database becomes available. In this case, you want to configure the primary database to make it standby database. If you don't have a flashback database configured in the old primary database or the new standby database, you have to recreate it from scratch. But if the flashback database is there, it will be much easier. You can restore database using the flashback database technology and then reinstate it. It's a matter of a simple procedure to make the old primary database available again and operate as a standby database. This is a time-saving procedure, which, which Flashback database provides it for you in the data guard environment. I'll talk also about another advantage of using Flashback database. One of the options in Oracle Data Guard is to delay the redo apply in the standby database. You would do, you will delay it for, let's say, five minutes or 10 minutes or one hour. Why you would do that? One advantage you can obtain from delaying applying the Redo uh, uh, blocks 
is that protecting from logical corruptions in the blocks. So suppose at 8 a.m. you re some uh, logical corruption happened in the primary database and you discovered that at 8.15. You can stop the sync between the primary database and the, the standby database and use the standby database for recovery because the corrupted uh, blocks haven't been yet applied on the standby database. The disadvantage of this method is the standby database is not up to date. There will always be some lag between the standby database and the primary uh, database. Flashback database gives us a better solution. You don't have to, to do this delay option. If you discover that there is a logical corruption, you can recover the database to some time point in the past before the logical corruption took place. In conclusion, flashback database is highly recommended to be configured in a data guard environment. It will save you a lot of time when you need it. Another third advantage, by the way, is uh, some data guard features like fast start failover requires you to have flashback database configured in your databases. So in summary, we talked in this lecture about role transitions. We discussed the difference between switch uh, over and fail over. We said we learned that switch over is a planned procedure, whereas fail over is a reaction to an incident. Uh, it is uh, an uh, unplanned uh, procedure. We learned about data guard management tools, SQL plus, data guard broker and enterprise manager. We learned that we highly recommend configuring a data guard broker because it makes managing the data guard environment much easier than using SQL plus. And finally, we uh, discussed the link between the database flashback and the data guard environment. And we learned that it's highly recommended to configure flashback database in any data guard environment. This is the end of this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.